Hello and welcome to the third episode to learn how to program in Python for beginners. Today we're going to learn a bit more about variables, uh, conditionals and booleans. Let's get into it. Let's do something a little bit interactive. For example, the program is going to ask us about our name, ask questions to the, to the user and give answers. So let's create a variable called name and we use a function called input. So input, what's your name? Okay, so we can see here, first of all, name is a variable and the function input is going to receive one parameter here, which is a string, which is say, what's your name? That is what is going to be printed and uh, show in the screen for the user to add uh, to fill that question, right? to answer that question. And whatever the user is going to type in there is going to be returned by this function is going to be the value of name. So name will contain anything you type in there. So if we run this, here we have what's your name. So we can type anything we want and it will just exit the program. So let's print that name for example print so you say like it's an f, f string so hello and here name so what we are going to do here is using an f string and a placeholder and in the placeholder we have the name of the variable so whenever we answer it's going to end up in name and whenever is in name it's going to end up here in the f string and it's going to be printed so what's your name peter hello peter okay so this is a way we can use uh, input to ask for information to the user and we can store that information into a variable so if we went to the first episode learning about what a program is there was this example about calculating your age so let's try to do that program here now so first of all, we need to give variables um, a meaningful name, right? So for example, current year, then the birth year, now that we have this, the user will input the year, the current year, the year they were born, and now we need to calculate this. So we can create a, a variable called age is equal to current year minus birth year and this should give us the age of that uh, person and now we can print you are age years old okay so this looks pretty logical right we ask for the current year the year that we're born then we have another variable called age and in this variable we get whenever input they put there that year and subtract the birth year by that we should know how many how old is this person and then we will print you are age here in the placeholder for this variable which is the age calculated age you are whenever years old so let's run this and see what happens so what is the current year well 2022 what year you were born I was born in 1920 very old and we have an error what is the error here what we can see is that it's a type error it says for the operand minus we are trying to subtract a stream from a stream so basically what it's telling us is that what we introduced here as the question as the answer for that question is actually a string it's not a number we can see it as a number but it's not a number it is a string. It's a string of 2022. Two, two. The character 2 and the character 0 and so forth is not really a number. So it cannot really calculate what that string minus that other string is. There's no way to calculate. It doesn't make any sense. So that's why it's failing. So we need to find a way to transform this current year, this string that we introduced, this 2022 or 1920 or whenever we put in there, into an int, into a number, and then we can actually calculate them. The process to actually figure out what's going on is called debugging. 
And this comes from the concept of a bug, something that I'm sure you probably already heard about, especially if you're used as an app user you, or software user. It's many times that you hear heard the term saying like the program has a bug and that's why it doesn't work. Well, the bug is basically any sort of mistake in the code, error in the, inside the code that makes a program that doesn't work as it's supposed to work. And there are many different kinds. And in order to debug it, to remove this, the term use debug is used. So basically where bug comes from. So if you search in the Wikipedia, the term bug was used in an account by computer pioneer Grace Hopper who publicized the cause of a malfunction in an early electromechanical computer. A typical version of the story is. In 1946, when Hopper was released from active duty, she joined the Harvard faculty at the Computation Laboratory, where she continued her work on the Mark II and Mark III. Operators traced an error in the Mark II to a moth trapped in a relay, coining the term bug. This bug was carefully removed and taped to the logbook. Steaming from the first bug, today we call errors or glitches in a program a bug. So in order to start debugging what's going on, let's go step by step. Let's comment this line here, H. And now let's print, uh, also let's comment this one here. And let's print the values of the variables that will contain our answers. So print current year and print birth year. So if we run this again and we put the same input, okay, we see that it's printed there. So now let's see and confirm what kind of type this is. We can use the function type that we learned before and pass that to print. So look at what we are doing here. Pay attention to this. Print is a function, right? And type is a function. We know it's a function because functions are on the format of function and then parentheses, right? So the function name and then the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we pass a parameter. A parameter to a function can also be another function. So type, which is a function, we pass a parameter, which is the current year, which is a variable. So follow the trail here. Current year is a variable that contains the string that we input as an answer. So that string will end up in this case, 2022 string, not the number will end up in current year. Current year will contain a value. It will be a, that variable, but contain that value. Then here in the function type, we pass current year as a parameter, basically telling type A, this is your parameter, the current year, figure out the type. So type will process and do its internal thing and return the type of that variable. And that data that is returning from type is going to be the input of print. It's going to be the parameter of print. Print receives parameters like strings. So it's going to print the result of that type uh, function. So if we run this after all this monologue, <laughs> we have the answer and say like, yes, your variables here contain strings. And so now we can debug the program and understand, ah, okay, that's the reason. We could understand that previously from the error, but I'm showing you here a very like simple way of trying to book, book inside the program and try to see what's going on, like uh, to see the values of different variables and see actually what what got to that point in, in the error. Okay, now that we figured that out, we can start doing the conversion of these uh, values into, into in integers. Before we get there, let's play a little bit here in the shell in the Python interpreter to see how the conversion works. It's all about using functions, okay? So for example, let's say we have a variable called number, but in this number, we put the number 10 in double quotes. So this is actually a string, a string of the character one and zero. It's not the number 10, it's just one and zero characters. So if now, if we use a function int from integer and put number in there, it will convert 
that string of one zero into an integer. So now that's a number. Ten. It can be calculated, computed, added, multiplied whenever you want. It can be used as a number. It's understood as a number. If we type put type and for example int a number is telling us that the whatever int here is returned, which is this, which is this, whatever is returned is an integer. Okay, so the conversion has been made from the string to an integer. Let's do the other way around. If now we say number is equal to 10 and we do str, which is from string and put number is returned as a string. And you can see here that it is returning single quotes. You can define strings in double quotes and single quotes as well. So now it's converting a real number, number 10, into the string 10. Let's say that we have number equal to 1a, for example. And now we want to convert that string into an integer. It's going to give us an error because 1a, although it's a valid string, the, num the, the letter, the symbol 1 and the symbol a, the character a, Although it's a valid string, it's not an integer. So there's no way to convert this in a logical way. Let's change number to the string 1.2 and try to convert that from an integer, integer as well. Although 1.2 is a number, but it's not an integer because it has a decimal part. So the function int cannot convert that into an integer either. But if we use a function float, it ha it's happy to convert it into 1.2. Now that 1.2, it is a float. It is a real number that you can use to operate with it. Okay, so now we are ready to fix this issue that we have here. What we have to do is convert the input in current year, that is a string, into an integer. Let's create another two variables, c year. is equal to int current year and then b year is equal to int birth year. So now in c year, what is happening here? Well, you can figure this out, I think, already. You should, if you don't, go back and review these videos or leave a comment and we'll help you. Basically here what is happening is that you are taking that string in current year and pass it as a parameter to the int function that we saw before. And then whatever the int function is returning, that should be an integer, goes to C year. You can see in the future that this is not perfect because you know if I, instead of typing a proper number like 2022 or something, if I type a word or any other character, then integer is gonna fail and it's not going to convert that into anything meaningful. But that's fine. We need to learn step by step, right? So for now, let's say that the user, we trust that the user is going to input the right, uh, the right answer. So we have current year and birthday year. So we need to replace now these variables by the ones with the integer converted. Now, if we run this program again, Yes, you are 102 years old, okay? So that worked. Now there is another small issue here. What if instead I type that uh, the current year is the year 1890, but I was born in 1920? Well, I'm minus 30 years old. So yeah, you can't allow this to happen, right? We, in, we need to make sure that we, this app doesn't like time travels. Say it wants you to be born in a year that is smaller than the current year. So in order to do that, we are going to introduce a new thing here, which is called a conditional. A conditionals are a statements that allow you to check the validity of things based on if they are true or false.
So basically what we need is something that says like if current year is smaller than birth year, then inform the user and end program. So basically if you do that, we should inform the user and say, hey, the current year cannot be smaller than the birth year and finish end the program. So that's what we need to do. So how to achieve this? Before we get there, we need to learn about a new data type. Yeah! Booleans. So basically a Boolean is a type that can't have only two values. It can either be true or false, nothing else. Let's create a simple program to know if something, the computer or someone is happy or not. So a variable called happy is equal to true. Then if happy, then print it's happy. Else print it's not happy or actually it's sad, right? Okay, I'm gonna explain you this in detail. So if we run this, it says that it's happy. If I change the value of happy to false, then it's sad. So how this work? Let's try to understand what happened before. Well, we have if, this is the conditional, then we have something here which is going to be an expression, a variable, something that returns a boolean, then column, which is called, it is, it is to dot, then we have some space here which is called an indentation, and then we have here a series of statements, things we want to execute like print, we can create another variable, whenever we want, right? And then here we continue with the rest of the code. Well, this is very, very important to understand one uh, thing here in Python, which makes it a little bit different from other programming languages. It is the indentation here, because this area is called a code block. What it means is like this part doesn't always execute. And the reason is because you're only going to execute this area if something happens. That's why the if statement is here. So basically what he says is that if a condition is met, then something has to be executed. A piece of code, a functionality, something has to be done if a certain condition is met. That's why this has to be somehow uh, isolated, identified as a special chunk of code that is not always going to happen. And to do that, we have the indentation. All the programming languages use curly brackets, basically. So whenever it's between those two curly brackets, it's a block of code. But in Python, that's not the case. In Python, what it does, it uses indentation, these spaces that you put in front and based on that, you understand what is a block of code. And at the beginning, it's going to be a little bit difficult to wrap your head around that concept because many times you move code and just put it under and then thinking that it's fine and then you get an error, then don't know exactly where it is. So it's something you need a little bit of practice, but once it's understood, then it becomes actually natural to create this sort of indentation for identifying blocks of code. So the conditional if is not just only if something happened, then something is also if something happened, then do this. Otherwise, do this something else. So we have is if, and as we said before, like happy, then column, then print, let's say just happy. or else then print sad. So you can see here we have indentation here and indentation here. The reason 
should be quite obvious now and is because this part of code and this one they don't always execute it depends on the value of the variable happy if the variable happy is true then this part of code here will execute if it's false then this one will happen if happy print happy else otherwise print sad and that's how basically it works and then here you continue with your code in the same indentation level that you have here so this is one that's right let's make it in um in a different color so you can see this is one level and this is the other level so you can see that these two here are on the same level and these two here are on the same level and that's how you can structure the code and understand which block belongs to which one it's very important you get familiarized with this indentation system because it's used everywhere as i said before let's put this into action here but before let's understand a little bit more about booleans let's get into the shell down here and do some uh, experiments for example if i type one plus one it's two okay but if i type for example one is bigger than two it's false you see this operator here if you never use it before it's very common in mathematics and means more than so it means that it's telling that this on the left the one the value whenever it's there in the left in this case is one it's bigger than whenever it's on the right it's than two in this case this is clearly false one is not bigger than two so when we execute this when we pass this it's evaluated and returns false it says no one is not bigger than two okay so let's say that one is less than two it's smaller than two so we use the opposite direction in this arrow so you can find that it depends on the keyboard you're using search for it it's not uh, difficult to find this symbol if you never use it before so if we execute this then the result the evaluation is true because one is less than two one is smaller than two okay so now let's say for example is one equal to two we get an error and say okay why well remember we use equal to assigned variables so equal is a symbol to use to assign a value to say so like here whenever it's here on the right is going to be assigned to this variable and this variable is going to point to all the, the, the values that exist in, in in that evaluation right so okay we cannot use that is one equal to two is one equal to one so what we do we use it we use it twice is one equal to two and now it, it works and it returns no it's false so remember when you are comparing something to be equal to something else you have to put the equal sign twice and if it's one equal to one then that's true so now with this we can calculate here the current year and the birthday year knowing that uh, if one is bigger than the other by using those more than or less than arrow kind of signs and characters let's put this into action and see how that if statement would be written so if birth birth year is bigger than current year then print birth year can't be bigger than the, than the current year and then we exit the program this exit is a function that terminates the program immediately it's not a friendly way of doing it but it terminates the program immediately okay so let's run and try this what is the current year okay 2000 let's say again let's put we are <laughs> 19th century and where you were born in 1920 so they say b year birth year can't be bigger than the current than the current year and the process ended with exit code zero this is just the output from the exit function so if you need to exit you can use a function it's not nice we will find we will explain this in the future how to deal with exceptions and error handling and program termination and all that kind of stuff but for now is a new function that you now you can learn and you can use it so okay this is not very user friendly but at least it works at least it's telling you what's wrong right it's informing the user what went, went wrong 
Also notice that if you execute exit here, well, all these lines of code will never be executed, only if this condition is met. So based on what we explained before, you can see here that this is a block of code that not always is going to be executed. And also there is the indentation here. If we don't put the indentation, for example, and we try to run this, well, we will have an error, an indentation error. Python is smart enough to understand that after this column here, there should follow an indentation in the following lines of code, but it's not happening. So it's actually informing you that there is an indentation error. So you have to place this under that the indentation, those spaces there. Let's do this a little bit more friendly. Let's remove this exit here and put an else. And now we, what we are going to do is take all this code here and create an indentation. So it will become part of the else block. So we know for sure, 100% for sure that either one of these is going to be executed because whenever if is evaluating is a Boolean and Booleans can have only two values, meaning that it's either true or false. If it's true, it's going to execute this first block here. And if it's false, it's going to execute this one. So if we run this program, so we can just confident go and say like, okay, 2022 and the year you were born, well, I will, I will be born in 100, almost, almost 100 years. So it exits clean and nicely say that no, the birth year can't be bigger than the current year. And what happens is the program execution line goes here, evaluates this to true, executes this line, and then goes after the else block goes here in line 12, but there is no more code there. So it's not going to execute anything else. If I, we run this again and we do it properly and say like, hey, the 22, I was born, for example, in 1940, then you are 82 years old. It's actually executing the code in else. It's checking the condition and say, no, the birthday is correct. It's not bigger than the current year. Therefore, this is false and is going here to the else block. We are almost done for this episode. But before I want to talk a little bit about variables. So there are basically two ways of writing, two tendencies of writing variables, depending on the programming language we are using. Both are syntactically correct. What I mean, what I mean, what it means about syntactically correct is that the programming language is going to accept that way of writing a variable name, but there are conventions that everybody uses in based on the programming language that is good to respect and to follow. So we all kind of speak the same language. One is camel case and the other one is snake case. Camel case is because it looks like the, um, a camel back. And basically what you do is always put in capital the first uh, letter, first uh, character of the word. So for example, let's say like we're going to define a variable called um, day, daily or um, day temperature. Day temp so we put the first in capital. No, it would be day temperature. So you see like the, the, the second one is uh, in capital, or we put something like name and surname, for example. So you can see again, there in the spaces, instead of putting on a space, because variables cannot have a space in between in their names, instead of a space, we replace that by um, the capital of the following word, the first let, uh, character. And that is a way of writing uh, values, uh, the names of a, of a variable. The other way, the one that is in Python, the conventional used in Python is snake case for variable names. So for example, in this same case will be name and surname or daily temperature. And that's what the snake case is called that way because the underscore replacing the space looks a little bit like a snake, right? The whole thing will look a little bit like a snake. And that's something to keep in mind when you write and do better, you get used to this way of writing variable names. So when you see Python code, it, you get familiarized with that. And if you write code, all the people will actually expect you to follow the same convention.
it's also important to note is that in variables, uh, the capitalization is very important. So for example, if I have a variable called name equal to Bob, and I know the called name equal to Bob, well, first of all, the values are different because even if the same name, the first character here is different, it's capital, and this is not, that's the first thing that makes them different, the values themselves. But also the variable's name, because here the first one is in capital, the other one is it's in, in lowercase, uppercase. So it's important that we keep in mind that this makes these two variables completely different. Another thing is that we don't write the name of a variable with an uppercase at the beginning. That's another convention that we have to use, but we will get into this little by little, slowly. Something very important just to keep in mind is that uppercase or lowercase capitalization not, it's very important and makes it completely different uh, one variable from the other. So let's play a little bit with the variables here in the shell. For example, if I type a variable called name equal to John, and another one called surname equal to Smith. If I print name, well, we can expect that from happening. It's going to print the name. But what if I print and I say name plus surname? Well, we remember that we couldn't operate numbers and strings. That's true. But the plus operator also understands strings and strings because they are the same type. So what is going to happen here is that this operation is going to join the two uh, strings together. They're going to put them together. It's going to be name plus surname. They're going to become one string. And that one string is going to be John Smith without a space. If we want to add a space here, we can put double quotes plus and plus surname. If we execute this, then we have the space put in between. What it's doing is joining the first string, which is John, the second string, which is a spade, put it together, and the third string, which is the surname, put together, all together into one string. So in reality, these are not two strings. This is one string, and there is just a space in between, but it's one string. Let's try another example here. The B is, is going to be B, and B is a string and is uh, one character, but it's a string anyway. So print the B's, it's going to just to print B on the screen. Now let's type again the B's, this time it's going to be equal to B per 2 times 2. So if we print this, it's going to be BB. Well, if we now do this um, per 10 and we print it again, it's going to be 10 times B. So here the operator, the multiplication operator, understands number, an integer, and a string. And what it does is just repeating that string several times. This is something that didn't happen with the um, um, addition operator, the plus one. And so every operator is capable of handling and processing data types in different ways. And now we are almost done, but one more thing here. Uh, Let's play very easily with variables and something I want you to understand about how variables acquire value and how that value changes and how you can reuse that value is something in, that is very important here to understand. So for example, a is equal to 10. That is a variable called a and the value is 10. b is equal to 20. That's another variable, variable b and the value is 20. So now c is equal to a plus b. So if we print C, C is going to be 30. Fair enough, right? We have, we have A, 10, B is 20. So C is equal to A plus B, which is going to be like 10 plus 20. So C is going to be 30. Okay, now let's, let's change A is equal to 15. If I print C again, I still see 30. And this is very important to understand how this works. Because you might think that because C is equal to A plus B here, well, it happens if I change A, is that going to automatically change C as well? No, it won't. The reason is because the moment C has been defined, 
is defined by calculating this statement here. This what is that is doing is taking the value of a, which is 10, taking the value of b, which is 20, add it together, it's going to be 30. And then this is going to be transformed into 30. Well, I cannot edit this part here, but imagine that this part that is selected becomes 30. So c will be 30. In that moment, c is going to get the value and it's not going to change again unless we change it directly. So no matter what other the other previous variables values change in time, C still keeps the value that it initially was defined. So it's not going to get like a link to that and change correspondingly. No, it's just going to get its value at the moment it's defined and it's going to stay with that until we change it on purpose. We change it directly into C. So the only way to update, update C will be to run these again and say okay c is equal to a plus b because a has been already been assigned a new value so now if we print c we will see that it is 35. so there is a time concept that you have to keep in mind the statements get executed from top to bottom and it's also the sequence which statements are executed first which statements are executed after that and you have to keep in mind that time sequence of events and how things are happening and how things are affecting one to another. So that's why it's not that straightforward. It's not that easy when things get a little bit more complicated, but it's extremely interesting. That is going to wrap it up for now. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will be happy to answer them as many as I can. And in the next episode, we're going to learn about lists and collection of elements and as a data type, a new data type. Thank you for watching.